here we go. We got the trailer mounted. We still have to tighten it up. But here are the U-bolts with the brackets holding them together. Once we tighten these up, these two trailers will become one trailer. And then we have the next project. Got the hardware to Mount Groot to the school bus. See, there's a bolt and washer in there. And that's how Groot's gonna mount. We're about to do some surgery on the bus. <laughs> Check it out. Groot is mounted to the hood. Kind of looks spooky without his eyeballs. But I got all the printers packed, so I can't do anything about it. <laughs> we are at signing to sell the house. Let's hope it goes well. Go <laughs> to one of these Monopoly sets. I'll get one cheap enough eventually. How packed this thing is. Let me go wide angle for you guys. <laughs> Look at this. It is. There's the two microwaves. The battery backups are right here. Look at all the way to the ceiling. I got a little more space up there for some shit. <laughs> for stuff. And the spare tire, my steel table. I decided not to bring the glass table. Uh, I think it's too heavy. Wow. <laughs> well, guys, we started very late. It's like 3.30, and we're about 20 minutes down the turnpike. I had to leave behind my entire little trailer, my grill, and everything on it and most of my spare tires, because we were way overweight on the trailer. We couldn't even pick it up, the, the, the tongue of the trailer. We had to rip the hitch right out of the truck. So I had to leave all that behind. Thankfully, my mechanic can use it, including the trailer, so at least it won't go to waste. I also left my CR-10 Max behind. It's the biggest damn printer I have, and I forgot it. I, I, we were gonna load it last, you know, we're put it on top of the stuff on the trailer, and we just forgot. We can't go back. We're, we're too, we're too far past the point of no return. Uh, my buddy's gonna pick it up, and we're gonna try to take it apart and see if I can ship it. Um, it's worth the money to ship, so we'll see what happens. Um, the bus has got a lot of weight in it, a lot more than I probably should have. I mean, it's going, I'm doing 65 miles an hour, but I have to use the, I have to turn off the overdrive to do that. Um, so it's probably gonna make bad fuel economy. Although once I get to the flatlands, I should be able to put in overdrive again. The mountains getting out of Pennsylvania are gonna be horrible. I'm really worried about making it up some of those inclines. Because I've been, I've already done some couple small inclines where I can't accelerate. It just won't go. And, um, it struggles. I've got a lot of weight in here. So, ETA for Cincinnati is 1130. So we're probably looking at more like ele uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. We'll see. Three new tires, $308 for the trailer. So we now have four brand new tires on the trailer. The fourth tire they got for me was bad, so they did not give it to me. And they put the best of what I had left um, of the other two as my spare tire. So we might stop somewhere and get that spare taken care of. But I now have four brand new tires on the trailer. Let's hope the trailer holds. Let's hope the truck holds. Let's hope the bus holds. We are off. We are leaving Willow Grove. Yeah, that's right. Like three exits from my house. <laughs> um, and we're off. Eight and a half hours from Cincinnati. So we're going to be getting in very late. And we shall see what happens. But at least it'll be cooler at night. So more to come. Well, so far, so good. We just passed Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Goodbye, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> um, the vehicle seemed to be running okay. Uh, the bus seems to be getting unusually good fuel economy. I expect it to be at half a tank right now, and I'm still above three quarters. So I don't know if the gauge is just not accurate at the top half or not, but hey, I want to fill up at 200 miles anyway and see how many gallons is in there. 
Uh, pickup truck is doing good. Got a little warm, but it's staying there. It's not getting any warmer. Air is working good. Suspension's holding up, and the trailer so far is holding up. Okay, go back into overdrive. I got to downshift to third gear when I hit the hills. Um, one concern is that the freezers don't seem to be working. I'm getting AC power back there because the refrigerator is holding temperature, but the AC, um, the freezers are slowly warming up. 7.7 for the one, 13.1 for the other. They should be negative. I don't know if the UPSs are in a reset mode and they're not feeding power pass through, or if it's just too hot. As it gets cooler, we'll find out if the temperature continues to rise and I'll know they're not getting power. I know AC is working because the fridge is working and my battery box says we're good, we're getting power. So I know I have AC out. Wow, those clouds look nice through the visor. <laughs> but so far so good. I mean, I figure if I make it the first two or 300 miles, I'm probably okay. As we saw, if something's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go wrong pretty quickly, usually. So here's a bridge. The bridge past Harrisburg. Yo! Truck got a little close. <laughs> but, um, oh well, so good. I will keep making little clips. I'll do little live streams on Twitter every now and then. Maybe I'll do something at the hotel. Not tonight, though, because ETA for the hotel is 2 o'clock, and that's not including stops. So ETA for the hotel is probably three or four o'clock in the morning. Yay! Hopefully we can make up time tomorrow. But keep going, trucking along. Brute's got point. That is so pretty. Brute leading point into the sunset out of Pennsylvania. I guess we're about, uh, I wanna say a halfway across Pennsylvania right now, maybe a third, third to halfway across Pennsylvania. We're coming up on Carlisle and Chambersburg, 226. So I think that means we have another 226 miles to go before the end of Pennsylvania. Although we'll be getting off a new stack and starting our trip south. But yeah, nice. I wonder if this is how my cars got shipped out or something like that. <laughs> Man, look at those clouds and sun. More to come, we're gonna make a gas stop when he gets down to a quarter tank, no matter what, just in case. Well, critters, this video is not gonna come out that great. This clip, because it's dark. It's about 6 a.m. I reached my limit a few hours ago. I couldn't drive any further. So we stopped at the West Virginia Welcome Center. Snoozed. I snoozed in this seat. <laughs> that didn't work too well, but I am fresher now. So we are going to push on. Uh, we have three hours and 20 minutes, give or take for traffic until we reach Cincinnati. And then we'll be at our first hotel destination. Uh, big shout out to Michael Goodfellow for pitching in towards that. I appreciate that. Um, the problem we're running into is the bus is fine. <laughs> the bus is incredible, actually. It's not a problem in the world. But on um, the pickup truck, it's a different story. It's overheating. Um, but only when we're doing like long, hard climbs. I mean, there's climbs where we can barely maintain 40 miles an hour because we're very obviously weighed down with a big load. And um, that load is pushing the limit of the pickup truck and its cooling system. So um, we have to stop, let it cool down, push on. Every time we hit a sustained climb that's too long, the pickup truck overheats a little bit. Bus doesn't seem to care. But we should make it. I want to push on during the night hours right now because it's cooler. Once daylight comes, it's going to be hotter. And it's actually comfortable. It's actually very comfortable right now. So we will continue on. And you'll be seeing the next clip. Made it to Cincinnati, well, outside Cincinnati, and the bus is plugged in. Not only was I able to find a plug, but I'm in one single parking spot instead of taking two parking spaces. And because the back end of the bus overhangs so much, I'm not sticking out at all. You can see the curb right there. So I'm not blocking anybody, and I'm only taking one space. Ah, that's great. <laughs> Temperature's already going down. I have a little wireless thing. So I can tell the temperature inside the freezers. And I was able to plug it in right there. 
Yes, yes. Now we get the shower, change, cool off, etc. All right, folks, now we begin day two. It's probably about 0800, 0830. We're gonna be leaving Sharonville and making our way to Arkansas. So I'll probably, it looks like about nine hours, 15 minute drive. So we're probably looking at more like 10, 11 hours with our stops for fuel. Although good news is I'm getting about 300 miles to a tank. I'm getting about 5.8 miles per gallon. Hopefully that will continue and we will go from there. So I will see you guys later. We are about to say goodbye to Sharonville. Days in and be on our way. See you in the next clip. So I pull into a gas station and I run over a 12 inch curb. Needless to say, that destroys my tire. That sucks. That's like a, a four or $500 mistake right there. I figure, okay, that's what I got the spare for. All right, so I destroyed that tire. That's why I got AAA Premier Plus RV. I told them what I have, they said no problem. Now that I called to use it, AAA told me to go pound sand. <laughs> yeah, they, they said go pound sand, we're not fixing that. I got the spare tire, they just won't do it. So, yeah, so now we have to try to do it. We got a, a bottle jack, but it's sinking into the ground, so we have to get something to put underneath the bottle jack so it'll hold the weight, so we can lift this up high enough to change the tire. Yay. I just met Sarah, my sister, and her husband, Jameson. Um, we stopped at Gas and Arby's just um, west of um, Nashville, Tennessee. Keep forgetting the name of the city, Nashville, Tennessee. And um, so I just on a lark messenger said, hey, we're gonna be here for an hour. I needed to cool off, I was hot. No AC in here. And she said, on our way. And I was like, yes, she was only 40 minutes away. So we got to meet her. And I should have got a picture, didn't think of it. I was just happy to see her and hot, and nice and cool. Um, my dumb ass ran over a 12 inch curve this morning and um, detonated one of my tires. <laughs> Let me tell you, 115 PSI coming out of a tire is a hell of a sound. And called AAA. Hey, no problem, I got AAA Premier RV. Now, I already told them about this and they said no problem and they told me to go pound sand. <laughs> Thanks a lot, AAA. But uh, my buddy Chris Resto, he, um, we went to AutoZone next door, thank God there was one right there, and got a 20 ton bottle jack and a metal plate because the jack just sank right into the ground. And um, using his Milwaukee Impact um, for this impact gun, he changed the damn tire. Holy crap, now I want one of those, badly. <laughs> wow, I mean these are 33 millimeter nuts on this thing. So we have 310 more miles, 320 miles to go until we get to um, Little Rock, Arkansas, our next night's hotel. We'll probably get there about midnight. He was calling me through the radio. He saw some guy picking up a drive shaft on the side of the road. But um, we are now on our last road. We're about halfway there, but we're on Interstate 40, and this is it. Interstate 40 takes us all the way there. Like, my house is a half a mile off of Interstate 40. So we have another, probably about five hours driving tonight, and then we have a nine hour drive tomorrow, and then we have a four hour drive on Tuesday. That might take a little longer because these vehicles struggle to climb some of these inclines a little bit. And um, at some point we have to elevate ourselves 6,600 feet because my house is at 6,600 feet. So that's gonna be a heck of a climb. I hope it's nice and gentle. <laughs> but uh, I'll make another clip when we get to the hotel room in Little Rock, Arkansas. So see, I'll be there in five hours. You'll be there in about that quick. Well, this part's gonna be a little dark, where it's about to rain, so he's grabbing his clothes to put in the pickup truck to avoid them getting wet in case we get hit by the storm, we see lightning. But we're about three hours from Little Rock Hotel. I think we might make it, we'll see. If we get even slightly tired, we're just gonna stop wherever we are, not to be chance. Um, 
go from there. But we are now officially at the halfway point, roughly, from temporal, from a time perspective, meaning not counting stops, we're about halfway. Um, but the rest of it's all I-40. So, we'll see. More to come. <laughs>